Hi everybody, this is Scott. Welcome to my workshop here in Ventura, California. Today I'm going to be building a driftwood picture frame for a painting that I recently finished. This is a painting that I recently finished of a local landmark here in Ventura. Now, I went ahead and I painted the edges all the way around this painting. So the type of frame that I want to do today is one that doesn't cover up the edges. Typically a picture frame will be pushed right up against the painting and there will be a piece that overlaps onto the painting. This covers up the edge. So let me show you a couple of examples of frames that I recently finished. Here's a frame that I recently finished. And once again, the painting is painted all the way around. And with this type of frame, it allows the viewer to be able to see that painted edge. Now, I wanted this driftwood to maintain a natural look. So I kept the edge of the driftwood uneven on the inside, okay? Now, the distance varies between the painting and the frame. It can be as much as an inch or here as close as maybe three eighths of an inch. Now the way this is done is that I staple a wire to the back of the frame and then I staple the painting to that wire. I also put the hanger on top. Typically if the frame was touching the painting I would have the wire run across here but I wanted to keep this wire out of the viewer's eyesight so I put it up on top. Let me show you one more example of a frame that I recently finished. Here's another example of a frame that I recently built. Once again, the driftwood keeps its natural edge all the way around, especially right here where this big imperfection is. That's one of the things I like about driftwood is all the imperfections and unevenness all the way around. Um, the goal was to make a frame that looks like it just washed up from the beach. Once again, I stapled a wire in an X pattern to the back of the frame, and then I suspended the painting from that wire. Now, the purpose of this video is to show you guys exactly how I make this style of frame. This way, you can build your own in this style, or you can just use some of my ideas and improvise. I improvise all the time. This is just one of many styles of frames that I make. So I'm always learning new things and changing my style. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So the first step is to cut the plywood. Now, this painting here is 18 inches wide by 24 inches tall. I cut the plywood six inches bigger than the painting. So the plywood is 24 inches wide by 30 inches tall. Now the painting that I'm gonna frame today is 22 inches wide by 28 inches tall. So that means that the piece of plywood is gonna be cut at 28 inches wide by 34 inches tall. Now obviously this can vary depending on the thickness of your driftwood. Um, so, you know, I like about a three quarter to one inch space on average between the driftwood and the painting. And um, because the piece of plywood is six inches bigger, that leaves about three inches all the way around the painting, okay? So then what I do is I go ahead and cut the plywood at two and a quarter thick all the way around, leaving a three quarter inch space. Now, as you can see, sometimes the driftwood sticks below where the plywood goes. And anytime you have a thinner spot like this, where the uh, plywood is obviously, was obviously much wider than the piece of driftwood, it all gets sanded. And this way, you don't see the plywood. Um, now, I know it's, it's possible to build um, a driftwood picture frame without cutting the plywood, but I've just found that the plywood makes it much easier because it it's, acts as a guide 
to install the driftwood on top. And also, it helps everything hold together better. It keeps the corners from, um, you know, coming apart. And, you know, you glue between the driftwood and the plywood, and it just helps everything hold its shape long term. Because building a driftwood picture frame without installing on plywood you know, it's almost guaranteed to get knocked out of shape eventually once it gets moved around a few times and, you know, the nails can get pulled. But this way, this frame will hold its shape for a really long time this way. So, um, anyway, I'll go ahead and get that plywood cut right now. Okay, so the piece of plywood has now been cut. And as you can see, it's about three inches wider than the painting all the way around. I cut the plywood at about two and a quarter inches wide, which leaves about a three quarter inch space between the plywood and the painting. So now it's time to move on to the next step which is to rip some driftwood in half and start nailing the driftwood to the plywood. The next step is to rip some driftwood in half with the table saw. Now what I have here is just a regular 10 inch table saw. When the blade is fully raised, it's about two and a half inches tall. So the driftwood that I'm going to be ripping in half today it varies between about two inches to a maximum of three inches. So um, most of it I'll be able to cut in half in one pass, but if I need to I can always flip it over and do a second pass on the other side to finish ripping it in half. Now I typically leave the driftwood long when I'm running it through the uh, table saw, this way I can be back from the blade as far as possible. But there's places where I won't be able to fully uh, rip it in half until I chop it down, especially around curves and stuff. But usually what I do is I, I do the best I can um, by not chopping it down to begin with. So um, I'll go ahead and rip a few pieces and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I just got done ripping down a bunch of wood on the table saw and now it's time to move on to the next step. For the most part, the wood that I ripped down is in pretty good, nice condition. Um, but on most of the ends, it's got damage. And what I like to do for this step is I like to cut off all these damaged ends and look for stuff I'm obviously never gonna use and get rid of it. Now this here, this is a nice long piece. And for the most part, it's a good usable piece. But down here towards the end, it's got all this bark that's really raggedy. Now, this type of bark never looks good on a picture frame, so I'm going to chop this off and get rid of it. This piece of wood here also has bark on it, but this is nice looking bark with good smooth edges. So, I don't know if I'll use this, this piece on this particular frame, but but if not, definitely one in the near future. 
But as you look down this piece towards the end here, it's got this rotten end. And I can feel that it's really lightweight, not in very good condition, and definitely doesn't look very good. So what I'll probably end up doing is chopping it right about here and getting rid of this part. Um, so for this step, what I like to do is I like to go through everything that I just ripped down, cut off all the unusable material, and then lay out all the good stuff on the table so I can find a few pieces to build this frame out of. So all the driftwood has been cut and all the bad ends have been chopped off. So what I've done is I've laid out all the pieces here on the table behind me. And this is probably my favorite part of building the picture frame is to look through all these pieces and try to find four pieces that really work well together. So for this part, um, what I do is I find a piece I like and I lay it on the plywood and I kind of, you know, move it around and try to find out where I would want it, whether I want it on the top or the side. Um, and then I try to find another piece that I like and, you know, put it in different positions on the plywood and, you know, see where I think it would work well and kind of balance out the other piece. Now, this part can be time consuming but, you know, this is a part where I don't like to rush through it. I like to take my time and find four pieces that I think really work well together. Okay, I finally found the four pieces I'm going to use to build the frame out of, so now it's time to move on to the next step, which is to miter all the driftwood at a 45 degree angle and start nailing the driftwood to the plywood. So I ended up making a few changes to my original layout. Um, the first change I made was, this was my original top piece, and I ended up changing it to this piece here. And the reason that I did that was because once I mitered this piece, I realized it didn't match well at all with the pieces on the side. So um, the second change I made was I changed the original side piece here to this piece here. And the reason that I did was I realized my original piece had a bit of a bow in the back. And so I tried to trim that down with the table saw. And what ended up happening was it ended up making the, the middle part way too thin. So it just didn't look well with the other pieces. 
So the last change I made was I changed the bottom piece. Um, this was the original bottom piece, but it's way too plain. It just doesn't match good with the other pieces. So I changed it to this piece here. And this piece here has a lot more of the holes and, and imperfections, so it matches the top piece a lot better. Um, you know, this piece has some bark on it. I may grind some or all of this bark off. I don't know yet. Um, so for this phase, I don't worry about making the miters perfect. You know, later on, I'm going to be grinding the miters a little bit closer. But I do want them to be somewhat close at this point but they definitely won't be perfect. So at this point, um, I focus on one board at a time. So I'm gonna focus on this piece here and nail that down first. And then I'll move around the frame, just attaching one piece at a time. So, um, you know, I may make more changes as I do this, I just don't know. So, you know, at this point, I just have to be flexible and do the best I can. Okay, so I just finished nailing all four pieces of driftwood onto the plywood. And for the most part, the miters turned out pretty nice. Um, so for this step, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take my grinder sander and grind all the plywood back at about a 45 degree angle. Now, most of this driftwood here was bigger than the plywood, so you don't notice a lot of plywood from the front. But you do notice a little bit right here, and by grinding it, I'm gonna make all that disappear. The other reason I grind it is because when people look at the frame from the side, um, once this has been ground down at about a 45 degree angle, and then it's been painted and distressed, you're not even gonna notice the plywood at all. And that's the goal, is that people shouldn't even know the plywood is there. Um, you know, the idea is just to notice the driftwood. The other thing that I'm going to do during this step is clean up some of these miters where it didn't line up perfect. Like you can see this is about a quarter inch um, different than this piece here. So what I'm going to do is grind this down, but this is where I have to be careful. I don't want to start grinding off some of this natural driftwood right here. So I've just got to be careful and just feather this in real light. And the other thing I'm gonna do is clean up some of this bark down here. Um, I'm not real happy with the way the bark looks. So I may leave traces of it or I may just get rid of it completely. But once again, I don't wanna go overboard and start destroying some of this natural looking driftwood right here. Okay, so I just finished grinding down all the plywood on the back of the frame to about a 45 degree angle. Now the next step is I'm going to take the palm sander and I'm going to sand over all the plywood because the grinder doesn't exactly make things smooth. I can still feel some sharp edges here and there. So I'm going to take the palm sander and go over the whole thing. I'm also going to use the palm sander in the front really lightly but I'll go a little heavier in the corners where I use the um, grinder and I'll sand those down nice and smooth. 
I'm also gonna do some hand sanding, just really lightly over the whole frame. After that, I'm gonna countersink the nails, and then I'm gonna uh, fill the, the nail holes with some glue, and then sand over the glue to fill the holes with sawdust. The last step for today is to take the liquid nails here and fill any cracks between the plywood and the driftwood. It's really common to have cracks right here. So I like to use the liquid nails. It works really well. Um, you can also see a crack right here. They're not big cracks, but they do need to be filled. This just gives a lot more strength to the frame and helps it hold together a lot better. And then, um, then I'll let the frame dry overnight before moving on to the next step. So the frame's been sanded, the glue and the liquid nails have had a chance to dry overnight, so now it's time to move on to the next step. The next thing I like to do is I like to brush some of this termite killer onto the wood. Now the reason that I do that is because driftwood can have small holes in the wood. This is very common with driftwood. Um, I don't believe there's any active termites in this frame and there's probably no termite eggs. But for what's literally like a five minute job, it's well worth it to take the time to do this step. The nice thing is on a nice hot day like today, I can brush a couple coats on, put the frame out in the sun, let it dry for a couple hours, then I'm ready to move on to the next step. The next thing I like to do is I like to paint the plywood in the back. Now you can see the edge of the plywood is a much lighter tone than the driftwood in the front. Um, you know, the thing about driftwood is it's a lot of different colors. So I don't try to match the paint color to the driftwood. What I do is I paint the plywood a slightly darker color than the driftwood. And you know, naturally when the frame's hanging on the wall, there's a little bit of a shadow that's cast over where the plywood is anyway. So the slightly darker color actually helps hide the plywood really well. Um, after the paint's dry, I give it a light sand. The main reason I do that is so that I can dole down the paint finish to a really flat finish. I also burn through the paint in some places so you can see some of the lighter highlights, but I definitely don't go overboard with the sanding. It's just real fast, real light, and then it's done. Um, after that, I move on to the polycrylic. Now I like this stuff because it's water-based, which is always a good thing. It's also really fast drying and it's a matte finish. And I like the matte finish with the driftwood. I think too much shine makes it look too unnatural. So, um, you know, on a nice hot day like today, I can put a coat of this on, put the frame out in the sun for a couple hours, let it dry, give it a light sand, do a second coat. And then I move on to the final step which is to staple the wire in the back and then hang the painting.
Well, the frame's dry. It turned out really nice. It's nice and smooth. The plywood is a really good color in the back, so it'll hide really well when it's up against the wall. Now, the final step is to attach the wire in an X pattern on the back. Now, I use a stranded wire. Um, I've never had good luck with the single wires, but the stranded ones work really well. Now this wire here is probably much thicker than I need to use, but I would much rather use a thicker wire and have it never break than use a thinner one and have it eventually break. So for this step, I use a 5 8 inch staple. Now 5 8 is a good size because it definitely won't shoot through the plywood and then poke through the driftwood in the front. And the other reason I like the 5 8 inch staple is because the stretcher bars on a painting are usually half inch to 5 8 inch wide or so and when I attach the staple to the stretcher bar I always angle the stapler. This way the staple is pretty much guaranteed not to pop through the front of the painting because that's the last thing you want to have happen is when you're shooting a staple to have it pop through the painting and destroy the painting. So anyway this is the final step then after this we'll go ahead and hang the painting and see how it looks. So I wanted to introduce you guys to somebody. This is Oko Nono. She's been directing the video, so you may have noticed her in some of the shots. But uh, anyway, she'll be editing it too later. So if you guys notice any problems with the video, like any scenes need to be added or deleted, um, you can go ahead and contact her. Her email address is, what is it? Oh, it's um, okonono at gmail.com. But don't be surprised if it bounces back because she's not always good at responding. Okay, well, it's time to get back to work, so I guess we'll see you guys in a minute. So the frame's all done, the painting's been hung, it looks good all the way around. So the last thing to do is hang it up. Now remember, when it comes to working with driftwood, there is no exact how-to. This is just one of many styles I make. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you go to make your own picture frame, remember, there's a lot of different ways to do it. You can just use some of my ideas, use some of your own. Um, the main thing is let the wood be itself, show off the imperfections, and have fun doing it. <laughs>